All right, my name is Stacy, and I am a teacher. We were using Blackboard Collaborate and then switched to Zoom video webinars. For more reviews like this, click below. Both of these platforms help me teach virtually with students in a whole group setting, in a small group setting. I was able to use breakout rooms. I was providing tutoring one-on-one, -on -one, bigger groups. I was also able to provide accommodations to students with disabilities. Using Zoom video webinars was best for teaching virtually because it had great connectivity. It was easy to have 30 students on at once while I was teaching. It also was very easy to switch into breakout rooms, small group teaching. Zoom was able to mirror my screen. It was also able to hook up my document camera so my students could see the table that I was working on as well. I was able to use Blackboard Collaborate in order to teach virtually. However, it was best in a small group. The more students that got on, the less the connectivity was stable. So in a very small group or preferably one-on-one, -on -one, Blackboard was great to be able to teach virtually. I could just share my screen, uploading PDFs, and it would save it to the classroom that you had open. You could also use their digital whiteboard. However, if you need to erase, it'll erase the whole whiteboard instead of just one thing, which would be the preferred method. Getting started with Blackboard was not the easiest. It seemed easy for just quick video conferencing. However, it got tricky when you needed to mute all the microphones or create breakout rooms, keep your course room locked or unlocked or anywhere in between. It was, it was tricky to navigate all of their extras like uploading PDFs or using their whiteboard feature, things like that. The other drawback was that I couldn't see myself when I was teaching. I also couldn't see all my students. And so if I had a group of 30 students, it was hard to see them all because I could only see a couple at a time. On Zoom, it was a much easier transition. It was quick and easy. I could keep them in the waiting room until I let them in. I could see who they were ahead of time and I could see all their faces at one time while I was teaching with a large group of like 30 students. When I was looking for a software to use while teaching virtually throughout this last year, I was mainly looking for something that had stable connectivity. My students are all on their home internet, I'm on my home internet or sometimes at work to teach virtually. So stable connectivity is the best feature that I need first. From there, the extras that I really value are being able to share my screen with my students, being able to hook up my document camera so that they can see what I'm writing on at the same time to help teach just like I do in the classroom. Without those features, it wouldn't work to teach virtually.